Today we will talk about the Irish and Scottish clans in terms of successions of titles and how they differ. Clan means children or descendant. They would be made up of many families and septs. This grouping would form what we now call a clan. All came in descent from a common ancestor from ancient tribal kings to high kings of Ireland to even demigods of Gaelic mythology. It is believed clans started to emerge in Scotland around 1100 AD as political entities, although the families would have been in those areas led by chiefs for centuries before. So, a family, let's call them the MacAlvas, lived in an area over time while passing on the land and titles of chief to sons and cousins depending on either abilities to conduct raids and fight or how closely they are related to the last chief. As they started to grow, other smaller families in the area would look to the MacAlba chiefs for support from grazing rights of cattle or to help with raids from another clan. For the support, they would swear loyalty to the MacAlba clan. Depending on status or wealth of the new family, this could be a factor on whether the new family would adopt the MacAlba surname or keep their original one. But these new members would become septs within the clan system. When Chief MacAlba dies, his sons and nephews and even cousins could be up for the chieftainship. All male members of the ruling family would have their name put forward. This would then lead to a vote. The system, although allowing the best person to lead the clan, had a flaw, in that it creates a large number of people claiming the title, which often could cause infighting, causing maybe the losing claimant to leave with his family to join another clan, and thus the cycle continues. Some clans allowed female lines of descent, whereby the new chief would upon taking the title would adopt his mother's maiden name as his own. This seems to have been an ancient tradition of succession passed on by the Picts and wasn't widely used. Primogenitor started to take over whereby the eldest son of the chief would become his heir. This came in as clans started to follow the same rules as the Scottish royal family due to its interactions with the Anglo-Saxon and soon Norman kings of England to their south. The clan system would survive in Scotland until 1746, when, after the Battle of Culloden, where the British sought to eradicate this integral part of Scottish culture and identity, to, as they saw, civilise the Highlands. What followed was a brutal campaign of executions and stripping of ancient clan lands to be sold to the highest bidder. Irish rules of succession were far stricter and were enshrined in the ancient Brehan laws. Unlike some Scottish clans, Irish clans did not recognise female lines of descent. Brehan law in Ireland recognised a number of type of male line kinship based on a belief that there was a common male ancestor. Each family line was assigned into groups. The closest kin group that is defined is Gelfina or bright kin, descendants of a common grandfather. This is followed by the Durfina, true kin, descendants of a common great-grandfather. Then this is followed by Irfina, after kin, descendants of a common great-great-grandfather. And the Enfina, end kin, all of which contain the old Irish word for kin or family, Fina. The Durfina is mentioned the most. This may be because Gelfina was believed to have been added later around 700 AD, so the distinction between the two may have blurred from clan to clan. The leader of each kin group was called a Kenfina. He was head of the family. He was a senior member selected from the kin group based on various qualifications. Their jobs within the clan were to make sure land inheritance was distributed according to the law and clan custom. As entire families could be wiped out through war, disease or migration, these heads of families would meet to make sure that the clan lands were distributed. Fieners are ranks within the clan and held social status. The closer you were to the ruling guild fiener was effectively your noble standing. On the death of a ruler, the adults of the guild fiener and der fiener would vote for the next ruler from within its ranks. Normally they would pick within the der fiener as to alternate the families who would hold the titles. As they became chiefs, everyone from within the clan would move down a rank. So the Durfina who had been elected would become the Gelfina. The previous Gelfina would become the Durfina. The Eirfina would become the Infina. 
and the Ind Fianar would fall out of the nobility and into the common clan members. This is why when you search clan histories, unlike Scottish clans whose leaders would retain the same surname throughout, if unladed sons became a prominence to start their own clan, this would follow his specific line and so on. In Irish, many sons would start their own clans, finding a new family line, but would still be eligible to hold the title of his previous family and clans, and that of his brothers, sometimes at the same time. For example, Brian Baru was of the Dalkosh tribe of the clan Bloyd. He became Kem Fina of the O'Brien sept after founding his own dynasty. The O'Briens then, through military might, became a clan of their own, allowing O'Brien's grandsons to be Kem Fina of their own septs, all the while being eligible to hold all the previous titles. And this is one of the reasons clans of Ireland have different surnames sometimes holding clan titles. Because of this, the term in Ireland between clan, set and family is more interchangeable than that of Scotland. There were also hereditary titles like Standard Burrs, the McGormans of Clare and the O'Cleary clan poets and historians of Turcall. These would again allow sets to retain prominence within their given ancestral area, but more on those another time. If you like my videos please like and subscribe. I will be doing historical videos on Ireland, Scotland and more, focusing on our clans and families. Thank you.